announced today. Find out who it is and the reactions to it. And Syracuse selected a new student association president today. We have the full interview with the winner. And the second annual TEDx talk is happening right now in Watson Theater. We have live coverage. And while the weather wasn't quite as nice as it was earlier this week, temperatures were in the 50s and the sun peaked out later in the afternoon. I'll bring you my full weather forecast. Citrus TV News Live at 6 starts right now. Welcome to Citrus TV News Live at 6. Today is Friday, April 17th. I'm Brian Chung. And I'm Nick Cardona. SU has finally announced the 2015 commencement speaker. That is our top story tonight. It has been confirmed that poet and memoirist Mary Carr will be giving the 2015 address at the joint SU and SUNY ESF commencement on Sunday, May 10th. Carr will also be awarded an honorary degree at the commencement ceremony. Carr is an English professor in the College of Arts and Sciences and has been a poetry columnist for the Washington Post. She is the author of the New York Times bestseller Lit and has also appeared in The New Yorker and The Atlantic magazines. Chancellor Siverud in a statement says that the school is fortunate to have Carr on campus. The Newhouse School has also announced its convocation speaker Diane Nelson will deliver that address on May 9th. She is the president and chief content officer for Warner Brothers and the president of DC Entertainment. We decided to ask students about if they knew who the commencement speaker was and what they thought about the university's decision. Here's what they had to say. I think it's great. She obviously knows the students personally and she knows the university. She has a background, so she'll have a lot to say that's very personal to us. I kind of wish they'd pick somebody outside the university to give like a fresher perspective but uh so i i don't exactly like that but if she's a good speaker then i guess it doesn't matter too much uh, i guess that's good i mean it's pretty appropriate seeing as she goes here and um, she knows the university well as well as students so question of the day what do you think of the commencement speaker announcement you can answer this question by tweeting us at citrus tv news with the hashtag citrus q o t d now, the university has also announced the 12 university scholars that will represent the class of 2015 at the commencement ceremony. The scholars will have a reception in the Chancellor's House later this month and receive special medallions to be worn at commencement. After a week of voting, Aisha Sadat has been elected as the new Student Association President. Sadat will serve as president for the 2015-2016 academic year. Write-in candidate A.J. Abel came in second place, followed by other write-in candidates Safit Mezinovic, Ed Tatiana Cadet, and Jesse Nichols. Phil Kramer has also been elected comptroller, and the approval of the M M NY PERG has passed. There was a total of 3,426 votes, or a 24.1% turnout, which is a lower turnout than the 31% percent in the last election. I had the chance to speak with Aisha earlier today about the election results. Take a look. Aisha Sadat is now joining us for an exclusive interview here on Citrus TV. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you so much and congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> um, so let's get your first initial reaction to the news. I mean, I saw the picture, uh, you know, and <laughs> it, you were just ecstatic. Tell me your first reactions. Uh, Janine Bogris, who is a head of elections um, for this past semester, was playing a joke on me. Um, she called me and for the first 20 seconds of the phone call was just going on and on and on about how happy she was that we ran a clean campaign and that, that BEM, that we drove BEM crazy because of all of the rules that we had to follow. And at the end she was like, oh, and you won. <laughs> um, so just everyone in the room was just silent for like 30 seconds. Um, and it was just, just amazing just for us to hear that. <laughs> so moving forward, I mean, you know, the first, you know, 100 days as the President of the United States is called, but like mm -hmm. your first, you know, your first, you know, 20 days in office, what are you trying to do? Uh, what's the first initiative that you're going to put forward? Definitely so finishing the heat lamps. So um, the heat lamps are being installed in the College Place bus stop this summer. Um, so seven lamps are going in there. Um, so we're definitely trying to move forward to make sure to solidify the plans for the heat lamps in the, co in the South Campus bus stops. Mm -hmm. um, we agreed to putting three in three big major bus stops. So we're just trying to solidify the plans for that. Um, another thing we're definitely trying to do is put more money into late night programming. So like Orange After Dark, which is a program now is only strictly being run through the Office of Student Activities. Formerly used to be run through Office of Residence Life as well, but through the funding they couldn't do so. So definitely trying to increase more programming for that as well. All right. Well, we wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much for, uh, for joining us. <laughs> Appreciate it. 
SU is hosting their second annual TEDx talk with students and faculty sharing their thoughts on a wide range of topics. The event is currently taking place in Watson Theater, and Citrus TV's Jamie Weiss is outside right now. Jamie, tell me what's going on out there. TEDx is currently happening behind me in Watson Theater. TED is an organization where people can present their ideas based on talks, which last about 15 to 20 minutes. TEDx Syracuse University is in its second year right now. This theme for this year is Evolve. All nine speakers will be talking about how they've evolved either personally or through technology. I spoke with host Erin Miller earlier about her thoughts on this year's event. I think it's great. It's a very personable way to have people share their stories and to really have um, an access to these professionals that we have in the city of Syracuse and not limited to campus. So this is a great event. It's free to the public. People are first come first serve when it comes to tickets and seating. It will be streamed for free and live online and then it will also be available um, on the internet later as an archived video. So I think it's a really awesome event. Um, brings students, faculty, um, community, community members together to listen about um, different uh, ideas on how they can grow together and evolve together, especially this year. Thank you, Jamie. Now, it, I know that the TEDx event is happening. TEDx Syracuse right? is happening from 5 to 7 in Watson Theater, and it's also being live streamed this evening. If you can't watch it today, be sure to check in a couple days when they'll be posting it online. Thank you, Jamie. Now, I want to ask you a little bit about, it appears as if people are in the session right now. Uh, what's the turnout like out there? Well, currently they've filled out all of them. They're about to come into intermission right momentarily, but there's about 250 people watching, over 150 watching on the live stream, and more to come in the coming days. Thank you so much, Jamie. All right, some other campus news. The 25th annual Kid Fest took place today in Flanagan Gymnasium. The Syracuse University Volunteer Organization hosts the carnival event that brings the local uh, Syracuse kids on campus for fun activities. Student organizations and individual volunteers dedicated their time to organize activities for the kids. The event is organized by the Mary Ann Shaw Center. And if you are looking for a fun way to celebrate Earth Day, then you are in luck. The, the Students of Sustainability are hosting Earth Fest this Sunday at Thorndon Park, amp at the Thorndon Park Amphitheater from noon to 6 p.m. The event will feature live music, art installations, sustainability projects, and a whole lot of food. Earth Fest is free and open to the public. SU's annual Wellness Week is wrapping up. Citrus TV's Rebecca Bulos has all the details. With finals week just around the corner, Syracuse University had its fourth annual Wellness Week to promote healthy living. Wellness Week featured events on campus such as yoga, Zumba, and therapy dogs open to students, faculty, and staff to help them through the end of the semester. Um, for example, with Pause for Stress, which is the therapy dog event we offer, students have always said it's relieved their stress, it's really helped them um, get through so, you know, kind of the, the tough part of the semester. Syracuse University's Health and Wellness Promotion Specialist, Caitlin Cowan, said these wellness events were not only fun for students, but will help them perform their best as the end of the semester approaches. So it's really important for students to have a solid foundation of well-being in order to be able to optimally sit in a classroom, learn, and get the most from all that Syracuse has to offer. Healthy living is not just emphasized on Wellness Week here at Syracuse University, but it's something Syracuse highlights every day. We want to showcase that we have a lot of great Wellness Week resources at SU all year long. As Wellness Week wraps up, Syracuse University students will be ready to face finals energized and stress-free. For Citrus TV News, I'm Rebecca Bulos. Students to rate their classes and professors this semester will begin on Monday, April 20th. Students will receive an email containing a passcode for the online rating system, which will remain open until midnight on May 6th. And the Arts Department hosted its annual steamroller printmaking event on the quad today. Using a two-ton steamroller, students and faculty came together to build a pop-up studio out of printed wood blocks. This year's project featured hand-carved work done by university members and local high school students. And it's spring, and the nightlife in downtown Syracuse is coming back. The biannual Cuse Crawl takes place tonight in Armory Square, where participants will be able to travel between bars and enjoy some local favorite drinks. All bars participating have been announced on the Cuse Crawl Facebook page, and people who finish the crawl win a t-shirt.
Students will come together in the Dome tomorrow for Relay for Life. Between 6 p.m. and 6 a.m., students will be marching to raise money for the American Cancer Society and celebrate cancer survivors. Throughout the night, there will be music, yard games, and food from local vendors. The Women's School of Management is hosting its sixth annual conference on African business and entrepreneurship. The conference consists of a wide range of participants discussing their current work in Africa and other professionals from around the world. There will also be presentations, panel discussions, and keynote addresses. The three-day event will end on Sunday. The National Panhellenic Council is hosting its annual Men on the Rise retreat this Saturday at the Lodge in Skinny Atlas. This year's theme, Life, Love, and Leadership, will aim to empower young men of color in a supportive environment. The group will be leaving from Bound Hall at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Students are encouraged to sign up online. And coming up next, the Oklahoma officer speaks out about the event that has him in hot water. And a top member of Saddam Hussein's advisors has been killed. We'll be right back. A lot of clouds earlier today, but the skies have cleared up a bit, partly to mostly cloudy in Syracuse right now. The temperature is sitting at 59 degrees. Stay tuned for my full weather forecast. Citrus TV will be right back. Psst, they're coming. Please, is everybody. Light check. One, two, one, two. Everything looks good on our end. And lights. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. I think that Citrus TV is important because especially this year, Syracuse has been in the news so often. And we've often been there first to be able to cover that and really deliver it to the students. Citrus TV News is for our campus and our students. The great thing about Citrus is, is we allow students to tell their stories and we get to listen to their concerns. Citrus is important because we cover campus news in a way that no one else really does. Citrus TV is the voice of Syracuse University and it's something we're very proud of and a responsibility that we take very seriously. Oklahoma Volunteer Deputy Robert Bates confirmed this morning on the Today Show that his training records had not been forged. Bates is being charged with second-degree manslaughter for accidentally shooting a suspect, Eric Harris, earlier this month. Bates claims he had mistaken his gun for a taser in the heat of the moment. He is currently free on a $25,000 bail. The parents of the youngest Boston Marathon bombing victim have recently asked prosecutors to drop the death penalty against the man found guilty for the attacks. Parents of 8-year-old Martin Richard are hoping that the Department of Justice can make a deal with the bomber, Jokar Sarnayev, who was convicted on 30 of 30 charges last week. The Richard family's only wish is to put the tragic incident behind them as soon as possible. The U.S. Coast Guard unloaded over 14 tons of cocaine at a San Diego dock yesterday afternoon. With an estimated street value of $424 million, the Coast Guard used this drug bust as a platform to announce that this has already been their most successful fiscal year for drug seizures. Thus far, drug, drug seizures have totaled to more than 28 tons of cocaine, estimating uh, $848 million in street value. Saddam Hussein's former top advisor, Izzat Ibrahim al-Douri, died in an Iraqi security operation today. Al-Douri is the highest ranking member of Hussein's regime to evade capture in the 2003 invasion of Iraq, and is also the king of clubs in a deck of playing cards used by the U.S. Army to identify most identified individuals in Hussein's government. And fear of, fear of foreigners is not an issue. Fear for a foreign is not an issue unique to the U.S. South Africa is experiencing severe xenophobia, resulting in the death of five at the port city of Durban. In Johannesburg, uh, natives set foreign businesses on fire. Locals are, ret are retaliating to what they view as the loss of their jobs to immigrants. The unemployment rate in South Africa is currently at 25%.
Saudi Arabian airstrikes continue in Yemen amid fighting between Houthi rebels and government loyalists. In Aden, one of the major port cities in Yemen, families are camped out waiting to be taken to safety by ships. With help from Saudi Arabian Air Force's pro-government loyalists have succeeded in pushing back the Houthi rebels from many of Aden's districts. The weather sure wasn't like anything we saw earlier in the week. But should we see the warm weather return? Central CBS Josh Bazan has your full weather forecast. Josh, what's up? That's right, guys. Today was a little bit chillier than the temperatures we were seeing earlier in the week. We had some unseasonably warm temperatures, and unfortunately, it doesn't look like the good weather is going to be coming back, at least for the next few days. Taking a look at the current conditions right now, temperature was in the 50s earlier today, but it warmed up a little bit, sitting at 61 degrees right now. Partly cloudy, the sun's shining through. So it's a little bit colder than what we were seeing, but still beautiful conditions. The map of the Northeast shows temperatures in the 70s for much of the Great Lakes region. It's a little bit chillier in New York, 66 degrees in Albany, 56 in Buffalo, Syracuse is right in the middle at 61. All is quiet on the radar today. Not really any precipitation to worry about in central New York, but what this doesn't show is a large storm system coming our way. Right now it's working its way through Colorado and Nebraska. It's expected to hit Syracuse on Sunday night, and that's going to bring up a lot of precipitation, so we'll keep you updated on that. As for tonight's conditions, we're expecting a relatively quiet evening, a little bit chillier at 45 degrees, but mostly clear skies. There is some, if you do plan on driving tonight, just be aware there is some patchy fog that could, be possi could possibly pop up in certain places. And no surprises from the traffic map for us. The Route 5 is going a little bit slowly through Syracuse, but not much uh, concern for drivers right now. The five-day forecast, we've seen very warm temperatures this past week, but the five-day shows we won't be so lucky next week. Saturday, it's mostly sunny, a little bit warmer than today at 66 degrees. That wind, we could see gusts of wind up to 30 miles per hour. Saturday night, the temperature is going to drop. It's going to be as low as 36 degrees, mostly clear skies. Sunday is going to be a nice day, comfortable, sunny, 63 degrees. But Sunday night, that storm system is going to move in. We're expecting rain after 2 a.m. And that rain is going to stick around for next week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Temperatures in the high 50s and low 60s for that stretch. All right, Josh, thanks. Uh, so people coming out to uh, Cuse Crawl tonight, any, uh, any precipitation in the forecast at all for tonight, or are they going to be all set? Not really any precipitation expected tonight, so it should be a beautiful evening if you're walking around the bars downtown. And it's, it's going to be a little bit chillier, so maybe you want to bring a jacket, but it should be a pretty, pretty nice night. All right, thanks, Josh. Thank you. Up next, a new trend is taking teens by storm. And the force is strong with this trailer. More when we come back. King. Go fish! Stay up, Stay up, the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Here is my handle and here is my spell. When I get all steamed up, then I shout. Tip, Tip me over and pour me out. Oh. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Cheers. Take time to be a dad today. In just one year, the use of e-cigarettes has tripled among middle school and high school students. With the 2014 count reaching over 2 million middle, middle and high school users, e-cigs are now the most commonly used nicotine product among this demographic. The high usage could be linked to a lack of a federal law banning the sale of e-cigs to minors. You might want to be careful what kind of photos that you're posting online. 
Instagram's decency standards just got a lot more specific. Instagram will begin removing photos that show anything that the company deems as inappropriate content. Now, Instagram also redefined and broadened its don't be rude section to stop out the sexist, racist, religious, and ethnic attacks that have been surfacing via the app. Star Wars fans, the Force is back, and it's coming with stormtroopers, emojis, and R2-D2 painted airplanes. At the summation of a viewing of Star Wars Episode 7: The Force Awakens, director J.J. Abrams surprised the small gathering with the trailer for his new film. The cast and a droid were in attendance. The movie will premiere December 18, 2015. Coming up in sports, it's playoff time. I will preview the Brooklyn Nets and Atlanta Hawks first round playoff series and catch you up on some highlights on the first game of the Rangers and Penguins series. Also, it was opening day for the Syracuse Chiefs and they set a record, but it was not on the field. Stay tuned. Preventing wildfires. That's all Smokey wants for his 70th birthday. Thank you, dear. Oh, you're very supple. Just like I was at your age. Back then, I was a sex expert. You used to call me the buttered biscuit. I know about birth control, too. So you can ask me anything, baby. Bedsider.org has birth control information and a lot more. And it's... Have you had sex in this car yet? So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide and go seek. Syracuse has hired Drew Robinson as their new director of football operations. Robinson was a former assistant athletic director of creative services and fan experience at Rudger. Robinson attended Syracuse University and acquired a degree in the Maxwell School of Citizenship and Public Affairs in 2007. During his time at SU, he served as a student manager of the football team. Robinson's role will consist of assisting programs, finances, team travel, and, and the coaching staff. Robinson replaces Steve Skarnicki. The Orange took on number 14 Louisville Thursday. The Orange cruised past the Cardinals 16-8, staying the number 8 seed in the ranking for the NCAA RPI forecast. We have Syracuse over, um, they completely dominated um, with, with, with the final score of 16-8. We have Kayla Trainer, who was a big um, role in, in the Orange's victory. She had five goals and two assists. Alongside her um, was Kelsey Robinson, who, who assisted the Orange as well with 11 saves on the defensive end of the ball, which was very key for the Orange's success. Also, a stat that stuck out was um, Syracuse won 18 of 26 draws, which is to the strengths of Louisville, who are ranked number second in the nation in draw control. The New York Rangers faced off against the Pittsburgh Penguins in game one of their opening round series in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Let's see how that went. Here we have Rangers came, came out swinging with Rick Nash of the Rangers slabbing shot. Derek puts up a rebound with 28 seconds into the game. Later in the first round, Rangers passing up top and Rangers Ryan McDonald the slab shot for the goal and the Rangers lead 2-0. In the second period, Penguins' Nick Spenalt's right puts, puts the puck goal, and Penguins' Blake Common cuts the lead at the half to 2-1 Rangers. Pittsburgh wins the faceoff, and Rob Skrull with the timer. The Rangers would come up with the win 2-1. Game two of the New York Islanders and Washington Capitals series of the Stanley Cup playoffs will begin Friday night. 
The Islanders took home the victory in Game 1 and are 1-0 and in the series. The New York Islanders in Game 1 did an excellent job staying away from the penalty, which was one of the, one, one of the Capitals' strengths during the regular season. The Islanders also, took, also got the best of the Capitals on giveaways. They dominated only having five giveaways the entire game compared to, to the 11 by the Capitals. Game 2 is back on the ice in Washington with the edge no longer in favor of the Capitals. The Brooklyn Nets squeezed into the final playoff spot in the Eastern Conference and will play the number one seeded Atlanta Hawks in the first round Sunday. The Nets finished the season 38-44 and, and will face a very good Hawks team. The Nets are playing a team that finished the regular season losing their last three games. The Nets are, on the other hand, they made the final push at the All-Star break to make it into the postseason. The veteran leadership of Joe Johnson against his former team will play an important role in how the Nets will be able to quickly adapt to the high volume perimeter shooting by the Hawks. The Syracuse Chiefs put on a show in their home opener Thursday as they dominated Scranton 2-10. Fans were also excited to get a taste of the new season. The game set a record for the ninth largest crowd since 1934, and the Chiefs definitely lived up to all expectations. The Crunch will wave up their regular season Saturday against Bridgeport Sound Tigers. The Crunch currently sit number two in the mini division standings and number five in the conference standings as the head spot and as as they head into the postseason. The Crunch currently sit with a record of 41 and 24. Thanks. Now, I want to ask you about that Nets matchup. Obviously, the AC going up against that strong Hawks team. Uh, who do you have in the first game, at least? I would think that the Hawks would keep their one seed and obviously put on a show, but I think the Nets could steal one or two games from the Hawks just because the Hawks, at, at the end of the season, they struggled a tremendous um, bit losing their last three games. So it's definitely going to be a battle to the end. All right. Yeah. Well, thanks so much. We'll just have to keep watching. We'll be right back. My family's lived in this neighborhood for years. Oh, we have a question. We have a question. Recently, things got so tight, we had to go to our local food bank for help. I lost a lot of sleep worrying about what the neighbors might think. That is until I saw them there, too. How'd I do, Steve? A little stiff. Could have done a little what? better. What? Come on. You know, I have an Academy Award. Yeah, but not for playing me. Play a role in ending hunger. Visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank. I grew up in the housing projects of Cleveland. I didn't even know that life could be any better than it was. Education for me has been a way to get away from the agony of what was normal life. I want to be able to impact the community, not just look back on where I came from, but to reach back to where I came from and pull some people up with me. My name is David, and I am your dividend. All right, welcome back. We have Josh Bazan here with the Wake Up Weather. Josh, what are we wearing tomorrow? Tomorrow morning is going to be even warmer than it is right now. It's, the temperature is probably going to be around 65 degrees when we start heading outside, so uh, probably don't need a coat, maybe a jacket if you want, but it's going to be a really nice day tomorrow morning. Now, I saw some uh, precipitation in the forecast for next week. Uh, what's kind of what's the accumulation look like? Uh, it's, there's going to be a lot. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty strong storm system right now that's working its way, so it's going to be quite a bit of precipitation on all those days, so it's going to be a lot of rain to worry about. All right, Josh, thanks so much. Now, D.R.B., I want to ask you about that matchup between the Islanders and the Capitals. Uh, who do you have in the next game? I think the, the Islanders will continue their momentum. Um, I think that the Capitals obviously messed up in their first game when they had home ice um, in their advantage. And this game, obviously, still in Washington. I just feel like the Islanders are gaining the momentum, and it's going to carry them through this series. So right. we'll see, though. Thank, Thank you so much. much. And that is it for the Citrus TV News Live at 6. I'm Nick Cardona. And I'm Brian Chung. Thanks for watching. Be sure to follow us on all of our social media accounts and answer our question of the day. Have a great weekend, Syracuse.